Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And it's time for a freaky episode of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax. Today we're checking out a tiny little fuzz pedal that fits in this ridiculously orange box. It's The Bleep by Ranger FX. I had the pleasure of meeting David Ranger at the NAMM show last year, and his hair is actually as bright orange as this box, so this is right on brand. David Ranger has a history of making the zaniest, weirdest, wackiest pedals you can think of. One of his early successes was a pedal called the Dr. Freakenstein Fuzz, and uh, it even has the little It's Alive switch on it <laughs> to turn it on and thing lights up and it looks like a mad scientist's laboratory. This bleep fuzz is derived from that circuit. It's kind of a miniature, more pedal board friendly version of that. Also, there's this thing. This is the Igor. Igor? I'm gonna say Igor just because I'm such a Mel Brooks fan and that seems funnier. This is a small expression controller which has a little bit of a squish to it and instead of rocking back and forth on a full-size volume pedal you just have this tiny little thing and it fits anywhere. So that's the Igor or Igor and this look at this cute little thing. <laughs> it's so tiny. All of the jacks are on the top of the pedal and it's so small with no side anything that you can pretty much squeeze this pedal onto any board. So in case you're building a pedal board and you have a little bit more room for just one oddball pedal, this one might be the one for you. Really wonderful design. Let's plug it in and have a listen to how it sounds. We've got the bleep plugged in. Let's talk about signal chain. I have my violin going into the bleep fuzz via my Schertler Stat V pickup. That is going into the rest of my rig, most of which is bypassed. I'm using the Chase Bliss Benson preamp Mark II for a little bit of tone sculpting, and that's going into the Crazy Tube Circuits Golden Ratio compressor for a little bit of rounding off the edges. That's going into my GFI system Cabzeus into my interface. So I'm gonna mute the room mics so you can just hear the sound of the pickup, and then I'm going to turn on the bleep in its rawest form. You already know what I'm gonna say. I love weird gated fuzzes. <laughs> you can hear that as the note dies off, there's a noise gate in there that's clamping down on the extra signal and sort of chopping it off. It means that when you start the note, it has this sort of ripping entry sound. Some people call this a Velcro fuzz. I like Velcro fuzz. It's fun, especially with an acoustic instrument when you're trying to avoid feedback. Let's talk about the controls on here. So we have a volume knob that changes the overall volume output. There's this bleep fuzz control up at the top, and that controls the amount of bleep. What is the bleep? Well, when the note dies out, you can see the bleep and hear the bleep. I like that he's put these beautiful wacky LEDs on there. Let's take a look.
So that's what the bleep is. <laughs> you can see those LEDs sort of flash around every time that noise gate is triggered or opening and closing, it bleeps. Now we can change the pitch of that bleep with the giant green overtone knob. I say giant like it's large. It's a regular size knob. Everything else on this is so tiny. Let me tweak the overtone knob and you'll see what that does. It's like a little evil fireworks display. So hopefully you can hear that as I turn the overtone knob up, it is changing the frequency of that sort of squealing self-oscillation bleep sound, which is getting gated and controlled that way. Let's put it back somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna find the sweet spot on the green knob to find where that overtone sits just right. Let's see if I can tune that overtone to a pitch I like. There's a nice surprise. If I turn the overtone down, I am actually getting an undertone? Like that note is below the pitch that I'm playing. Have a listen. Aha! I found the spot where it'll work. It's just past three o'clock. It gets to that high G, which is like an octave higher than that. There's the note. So way up there in thumb position on the E string. Now the bleeps match my uh, note, which is nice. If you want to play in G, tune your bleeps. Suppose you'd like for the bleep to modulate it to go into different pitches. Maybe you want to just have a sweep of bleep, a bleep sweep, if you will. Maybe you want to have it going up and down. Well, there's a built-in LFO to do that. It'll just turn that knob automatically for you. If you look on the bottom of the pedal, there's two little buttons you can press in. There's mod and rate. Now, if I push in the mod, let's hear what happens.
sweet. So the bleep is slightly, slowly modulating up and down at a reasonable pace. <laughs> and uh, it sounds really cool. Um, I think the uh, green knob is still really useful to sort of set a center point around which that LFO will drift a little lower, a little higher. Let me lower that to a lower point and I'll show you what I mean. get the idea. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's, it's almost like putting a phaser or some other modulation pedal after the fuzz. So it's kind of its own built-in modulation. A couple more things to talk about. First of all, we haven't talked about the Igor. Igor? I'm gonna say Igor. I just loved Mel Brooks that much. The expression control. What does it do? Let's take a look. Kind of got my expression pedal in frame here. You can see it. When I step on it, it will change things. Let's have a listen. <laughs> you get the idea. It's not as simple as a uh, simple, like a treadle rocker. You have to really put some force onto that thing. You can squeeze it with your hand, but it's still easier with the foot. Kind of fun, tricky to get the steady pressure and get even. It, it is a different feel under the foot than a standard wah-wah or expression pedal. So you do have to practice with this thing or just push at random crazy intervals and get some freak out sounds. That is also totally appropriate. One more thing you can do, and that is you can use the Igor to control the rate of the LFO. Let's push that button in and see how that sounds. <laughs> so now I hope you could hear when I was pushing down on the expression control, it made the rate of the LFO speed up. So instead of a shifting, it was a and you can control that speed dynamically with your foot. This is, uh, for the math people in here, this is a question of velocity or acceleration. <laughs> Differentials, am I right? <laughs> where, where are you going? I like to leave it with the rate control off and just use the expression to control the frequency of the overtone because it gives me sort of a wah control. And if I need to go bubble, 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 I can just push my foot down really fast and that's kind of fun too. One other thing to try, of course, is let's see how this sounds with a bow. Now I haven't used the bow so much yet and typically my interest in fuzz is to find out what they do pizzicato because 
that's kind of the fun of fuzz for me is I don't need to use my bow. It sounds the same with a bow or without. But just to be sure, let's try it with the bow and find out. <laughs> So that's the long and short of the bleep fuzz. I highly recommend this pedal. It's so small that it will fit on any pedal board and it has a bunch of different options. It's got a crazy wacky sound that's pretty tunable. You can dial it in to be a specific sound that you want or use it to freak out in a bunch of different ways. That's a really inspiring tool for me and I hope you'll check it out as well. Uh, I'll link to the Ranger FX page if you want to check out more of their options as well as some of their other really weird pedals. Thank you once again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. That helps me out. If you want to really, really help me out, I'd encourage you to go check out my Patreon page where you can get exclusive stuff like the music that I wrote for this episode, as well as some unreleased music that's only available there, lessons for uh, the higher tiers, and a bunch of different other things that you might want to check out. So thank you, as always, to my Patreon supporters. You rock. I appreciate you. See you in the next one. Bye.